In this video, I want to talk about how we can be able to use Redux in React. And the last video, I talked about how we can be able to use Redux in a simple TypeScript node console application. Um, in this video, I want to specifically show you how we can be able to use you know, Redux, or in this, in this case, a state management um, in React, right? So here you can see I have a simple con uh, a React application, right? So basically, user asks that you basically submit a form, for example, let's say Apple, right? And what it will do is that it will basically try to find how many public repos, right? And make an API call to GitHub and try to find how many, um, in this case, how many public repos does this user name or this user has and it basically save it into our list, right? So you can see here we have, for Apple, it has one, four, seven, uh, 147 public repos, and then we can also be able to delete a user, right? So you can see you can be able to delete. And uh, it's a simple, really a simple, you know, app application, but the idea is I want to really show you is here how, how, how can people use Redux um, inside of our React application. So just to, you know, quickly summarize what, what, you know, what Redux workflow or data flow look like. So basically we have our view page, right? User triggers an action, maybe it was a uh, on-click event, or maybe it was a function that triggers the event and we, inside of that function, we also triggers the action, right? We dispatch the action. And then it will basically goes to the reducer to updates, or I should say the reducer will basically identify which, uh, you know, which action needs to be applied and and the which, like how can we be able to update the data and return the updated data back to the store. And the store will basically, you know, um, update the data or I should say render uh, in the view page, right? Um, so here you can see inside of our React, I, I'm using currently using TypeScript. So this is what I have in our package.json. So you can see I have Redux DevTools extension. Uh, I also have React Redux. Um, Redux DevTool extensions basically is something like this where we can be able to, you know, use it. Um, sorry. Yeah, yeah, in this case, you can see we can be able to use it and be able to see the state, right? You can be able to inspect it uh, using like a chart. Maybe you can see you have like uh, what we have inside of our states and what, what are the actions that can be triggered. You can see I can add a user, I can delete a user. You can be able to inspect um, these actions, right? You can be able to jump back to the time that when this action was triggered and so on. Um, and then you can see that I also have, uh, in this case, I also have Axios installed, uh, which I'm using Axios to make a API call. Um, so that's basically a, really a simple setup here. And then you can see that inside of our source, I have the um, app.tsx, right? Um, so here inside of our main, or I should say the parents component, I have a couple things here. Um, so you can see that those are the two components that we see on our page, right? So this is our add user form and this is the list of user list uh, component right here. Nothing, nothing really fancy here. And then you can see I have a provider tag. And what this provider tag does is you can see if I make a hover, makes the Redux store available, right, for pretty much the children components, right? All the components that we have inside of this provider tag, right? We'll use this, we'll be able to access this store right here, right? We'll be able to access this store data. Um, so you can see here um, inside of our add user, okay? So inside of our add user, I'm just gonna delete those. Okay, so basically you can see here, I have an initial data for the form, right? Basically by default, um, the user, or I should say the init, uh, default data has a name, has a repo, basically the form, right? Has a default value. Um, and then you can see the add user, right? We have a use dispatch and this use dispatch will basically kind of like similar to, you know, what we talk about in our uh, simple console application using Redux, you can be able to, you know, use this patch right then this use use call the use this patch which is equal to this patch and you can use this patch to dispatch an action and i also have our state our state which is you know uh basically stored the form data um, i also have the updater input right so you have your input every time when the ch when there's unchange we update the value right um, and you can also see we have our on handle submit which basically what happened is that when the form got submitted Right, we basically first 
gets the, uh, or in this case, make a request to fetch the data, right? Um, based on the state.name, which is what the user typed, right? If there's, you know, if there, uh, if we are unable to find this user or this user is 404 or does not found, we can basically um, cache this error and just alert it. Uh, we're not dispatching any action, right? Um, if we were able to find the data, right, for this user, then what we can do is we can dispatch this action. Whoops, yeah, we can basically dispatch this action right here and then we can basically, you know, reset our state or reset our form, right? So let's take a look at, you know, our action here. So add user state or add user action. Um, this function, you can see it takes the user or I user, right? Um, and pretty much you can see the I user just is a really simple interface which has a name and numbers of repos. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at that. So you can see here inside of our add user action, it takes what we have in our states and then we basically update our repos, right? So let's take a look at add user action. So you can see it takes the user and it basically returns a type and a payload, right? Which delivers to the reducer. Uh, and you can see that this is our action type, right? So this is add user. And then the reducer will basically, based on the type, right? If it's add user, right? We basically just gonna update our state. So we're gonna update our state and then we're gonna add a current payload onto it. Uh, or I can just do like payload because in this case, payload is a user, right? Um, yeah, so you can see payload is an I user, okay. Um, so you can see here, basically, once that's triggered, right, I can be able to see it in the user's list. Okay, so let's take a look at user's list, right? So once we dispatch the, you know, in this case, dispatch our action, we return the updated data to our store, and you can see that this is our store, right? It's very similar to, you know, what it looks like in our console application. Uh, we have our combined reducer, which we can be able to input multiple reducers, but in this case, we only have one. And then we're basically creating our store, and we this, these are the reducers, right? And the compose with dev tools is what we have here, right? Um, and then this is basically how we be able to add, you know, uh, compose with dev tools. And uh, you can see here I have i root states. So basically, this is the interface where what we have in our state. So we have users, and users is basically a type i user list, right? Um, so it's very easy to understand since we're using TypeScript here. So now you can see that inside of our users list, right? Uh, it's a bit different because you can see we're uh, we're not only have this patch here, but we also have user sele user selector, right? But what this user selector does is that it basically um, you can see if I were to hover it, a hook to access the Redux store state. Uh, this hook takes a spec selectors function as an argument, right? So it basically uh, you can see that. In this case, the state, right, which is I root uh, state, and we talked about what it looks like. So you can see it's only uh, the data or what we have inside of our state. In this case, it's just users with a list of I user, right? Um, so you can see that the state is we're only one of the users. So we're basically saying that re this function should return state dot users, and then that's what we have here. So we can be able to map each and every single user and it's a display that in our uh, in our view, right, or in our HTML, or sorry, uh, TSX, right? And then you can see here, um, basically, we have like a table, right? And these are kind of like the, um, you know, like each and every single row, right? And then we also have a unclick, and this unclick will dispatch a remove user action, which takes the name, right, which is a string, right, for this function, and it returns a, you know, the type in this case is delete user, and the payload in this case is just a name. And then what happened in the reducer, you can see here, is if, if the case is delete user, it will basically filter the state um, and make sure that you know e.name does not equal the name. Basically, we want to filter that, you know, all the objects that doesn't have, or I should say, like filter out all the objects um, that has this name, right? So you can see that it's basically what we have here, right? So let's play around with this application here. So um, in this case, if I have Apple, right? It basically asks, you know, submit a form and then you can see it go out and sends the request to GitHub and fetch for Apple, right? And uh, it basically adds it to our current state, right? 
Uh, and if I were to look at that in our dev tool, or in this case, yeah, Chrome uh, Redux dev tool, you can see that we add the user. Before that, you can see our state has only two, two items, right? Tom and Jack only has one repo. After we add it, you can see our state changed, right? We have another object, which in this case is Apple, and the repos that, that Apple has is 147. Okay. Now I can also delete a user, right? So you can see here, if I delete a user here, so you can see I um, basically in the users list, I have this on click, right? And this will trigger or dispatch the remove user action. Um, if I were to click, you can see. So you can see that after we delete a user, you can see the user does not exist anymore. So if we were to look at state, you can see we only have two two users here, okay? Uh, before we add a user, you can see we have three, but, uh, sorry, before delete user, you can see we have three, but now after we delete a user, you can see we only have two. I can delete Tom, right? So you can see we only have just one user right here, okay? Now, of course, if you want to install the Redux dev tool, um, you just have to download that in the Chrome um, extension. And then you also have to, like I said before, you have to install the Redux Dev Tool extension. Um, and then inside of the store, um, you will just have to put Compose with Dev Tools right here. Okay.